haptic knob of the nerve axon at rest. The muscle cell is at rest. The inside of the cell is negative 70 millivolt with more potassium ions inside the cell and more sodium ions outside the cell. Right now, the muscle cell is polarized and ready for a signal. A nerve impulse is sent down an axon terminal, opening up calcium channels in the axon. The calcium floods into the membrane, causing synaptic vesicles to undergo exocytosis and release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft, the space between the synaptic end bulb and the motor end plate on the muscle. The acetylcholine travels through the synaptic cleft and binds to receptors on the motor end plate of the muscle, opening up ion channels. The open channels allow cations, such as sodium, to flow into the membrane. The flow of sodium into the muscle fiber causes it to become more positively charged called depolarization, triggering an action potential. Muscle action potential travels along the sarcolemma and into T tubules. When the signal travels into the T tubules, it causes calcium channels in the sarcoplasmic reticulum to open, releasing calcium into the sarcoplasm. This is a fascicle. A muscle is made up of bundles of fascicles. Within each fascicle, there are bundles of myofibers. Within each myofiber, there are myofibrils, which are the contractile organelles of skeletal muscles. Thickened thin filaments are found in the sarcoplasm of the myofibrils. Thin filaments consist of troponin and tropomyosin and actin, while the thick filaments consist of myosin. Calcium floods the sarcoplasm and binds to the troponin and the thin filaments. When the calcium binds to troponin, it causes troponin to move tropomyosin exposing the actin. This is called the troponin complex. Mitochondria in the muscle fiber makes ATP. ATP binds to the myosin head and hydrolyzes into ADP and a phosphate group. This energizes the myosin head and causes the heads to switch from a low energy state to a high energy state and attach to the actin. When the myosin head attaches to the actin, it forms a cross bridge and releases phosphate group. A power stroke occurs, causing the cross bridge to rotate to release the ADP. As the cross bridge rotates towards the center of the sarcomere, it slides the thin filament past the thick filament. When the thin and thick filaments slide over each other, it causes the muscle to contract. At the end of the power stroke, the cross bridge remains attached to the actin until ATP binds to the ATP binding site and the myosin head and detaches the cross bridge. Calcium channels in the sarcoplasmic reticulum wow. close that was... and the active transport pump which uses ATP pumps the calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum which it is bound to the calciquestrin. The cell is repolarized by pumping sodium out of the cell, causing the cell to become polarized again and ready to respond to a signal. Acetylcholine is broken down by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which attaches to collagen fibers in the extracellular matrix of the synaptic cleft. Acetylcholinesterase breaks down acetylcholine into acetyl and choline which are reabsorbed into the synaptic bulb and repackaged into vesicles where they form acetylcholine.